Okay, you both understand English, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. As I'm going over the rules, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. The fight is governed by the Nevada Athletic Commission, which means that there is no standing eight count, there is no three knockdown rule, and you can't be saved by the bill in any rank. Keep all your punches up and in front of the man. No low blows, no rabbit punches, no kidney punches. I'm going to be there at all times. I want you to listen to my commands. Are there any questions? No, not at all. Good luck Thank to you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Thank sir. You. Thank you, Mr. Bates. Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you. My job as a referee is to keep control of the fight at all times and administer the rules in the ring. I've been refereeing for now over 20 years. Before I became a referee, I was an inspector with the Athletic Commission for about six years. And before that, I was a glove man. So in total, I've been around the fight game for over 30 years. When I'm in the ring with the millions of people watching around the world, I have to um, make sure that no fighter suffers any undue punishment. It's my job to stop it when I feel is necessary. The first big super fight that I refereed was Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins. And I would have a couple of friends say to me, yeah, you better be on your A game because you know there's going to be 200 million people watching you. And they're right, there's going to be a lot of people watching. But over the years, I have developed the confidence. I've been around the sport a very long time. And from years of being in the ring, you know, I can't tell you the number of hours I've watched fights on television as well as the fights that I've collected re-watching. What we have to do as referees is train our eyes to what we see so that when it happens, we can't think about what decision to make. Look at the brilliant accuracy of Manny Pacquiao landing with both right and left hands. As you can see in this fight, it's a high tempo pace fight. So my movement is crucial to be in position when something happens so that I can make the right call. When I watch a fight on television, I'm watching that fight as if I'm in the ring refereeing it. I'm critiquing myself now. I'm watching very close now because the pace of the fight is still at a, a very high rate. And then a perfect left hook thrown by Manny Pacquiao and down goes Ricky. There's only been a few times in my career that I've seen a fighter go down that way, and um, it's not good. You, you can see that his eyes are open, but they're very, very glassy. You can see that that left punch just totally took everything out of him. There's the knockdown again. I never took my eyes off of Ricky from that point and could see by the time I rotated in position to get a better look at him that he was not getting up. So at that point in time, I stopped the fight. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to keep this fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch them up. The fight itself is brutal enough as it is. And when it's time to pull the cord, you know, we can let a guy swim out to deep waters, but we don't want him to drown. Pat Russell's line, and I love it because we can take him out to deep waters, but we don't want him to drown out there. As referees, we do what is called selling the call. Selling the call is once he gets up, I ask him, are you okay? I look into his eyes. Then I'll step back and I'll ask him to come to me. Kenny Bayless wants to see if he's ready to fight. Then I'll ask him to give me his gloves. So I've done three things to check him out. And if he does all three of them, I let it continue. 
Bayless is gonna let him stay in the fight. He responded the way he should have responded, but he's still getting beat up. If Amir had showed me anything leading up to the third knockdown, I would have let the fight continue, but he didn't. Third knockdown. Third knockdown of the fight. Two in this round. Five, six, seven, eight. You okay, man? He looks at me, he shakes his head, but he's just taking too much. If a fighter can't defend himself from the shots that he's taken, then there's no point in letting it continue. And that's always foremost and number one. Safety is first. The first time I had a fatality in the ring, I think it was 87 or 88. The fighter that got hit went down like the way Ricky Haddon went down when he fought Manny Pacquiao. The doctors got in the ring right away and the fighter was suffering from a cerebral hematoma, which is common in those situations. And they had to do surgery right away. They got the bleeding to stop, but once they sewed him back up, the bleeding started again, and he, he passed away. When I got the call the next morning, I cried over and over and over, asking myself, is this the sport I want to be in? That was another situation for me to put it in the hands of the Lord. And there's been a few times during my career where I just had to say, Lord, give me the strength. And because of my faith, I've been able to get through it. Kenny, you got the fights this weekend too, though. Right. You know how it is. I don't. I don't know what fight I'm doing until I get there and we get our assignments. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know which one I'm doing. For each referee, there's a lot of preparation physical and mental preparation that we have to do. And for me, being in the ring, I want to be at my A game every time I get in there. And knowing that I'm eating healthy and exercising like I should, I feel that I can't lose. It's not like you think of it the day of the fight. Being an official and getting in the ring is with me every day. And that's what makes me who I am. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this food and this time we have together. Thank you so much. I try to work in a rhythm as well as the fighters work in a rhythm. And as an official, we have to be prepared for the hard one. I mean, I've been in the ring with heavyweights. A, 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 a fighter A is 6'9", 275, and fighter B is 6'4", 245. So when you add up the weights, it's a combined weight of, you know, 500 and... 30, 40 pounds, and you're in there pushing these guys around. You got to be ready for that too. <laughs> well, right now, you know, the moment still hasn't hit me. I mean, I'm headed to the wind. I know what I have to do. Now it's just a matter of making sure I, 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 I get there, don't get pulled over by the police, <laughs> just get there safe. And then once I get there and actually get in the venue, it's when the juices start flowing. It's kind of an adrenaline rush in its own self leading up to the event. It's great, I love it. When us officials get to the venue, we usually have a uh, pre-fight meeting and it's nothing real serious other than the secretary is giving us a bout sheet to let us know what fights that we're going to referee. Then we get in the ring and we check the ring ropes, check the canvas, everything that exists around the ring. Then we go back to the dressing room and we'll go over the rules. If the heads are coming close, I'll use soft warning, la cabeza, la cabeza. I'll find me a little small secluded spot and I'll start stretching and warming up and then we end up going back to ringside, and then at that point, we just wait for our individual fight to take place. Basically, what we want the fighters to do is respond to our voice command. No pushing, no pushing. And if they respond to our voice command, then for the most part, it's gonna be a pretty smooth fight. 
my middle son, back when I first got started, kept saying, Dad, Dad, you got to get a saying. And, and that kind of wasn't my thing. No, Dad, you know, Mills Lanes is, let's get it on. You got to find something. I says, well, it's not my thing. Well, he came up with, well, why don't you say um, what I say, you must obey. So that happens to be my catchphrase. <laughs> And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Kenny Bayless. Kenny Bayless, by my lights, a terrific referee who makes very strong judgments. He's maybe the most athletic referee in Nevada. The noise level in here was unbelievable. I hear the crowd, I hear the corner man, the commentators, I hear all of it. And depending upon where I am in the ring, circling around, uh, Whatever is happening, my focus is on those fighters. I have to keep control of myself as the fight unfolds. And when the pace of the fight picks up, it gets loud. A fight breaks out in Vegas at the end of round three. Again, that's where our training is very important because a knockdown, a slip, and if you get caught up in the crowd, you could make the wrong call. So you really have to keep your focus in, in, in those moments. Marquez, Marquez, his feet are wobbling. Marquez, He's in trouble. Pacquiao attacks. What a round. What a round. Marquez was off balance again. Now gets his feet back and tries to roar back the nail. Pacquiao with the right hand. And that's another knockdown. And will he get up? The best part for me has been that my work has been recognized. And to know that people are watching me close enough to give me their opinion as to my work is self-gratifying to me. When a fan comes up to me and says, you know, I like your work, you're not biased, you're fair, that's the best part for me because it just tells me and reminds me how far I've gone, how far I've come, to get to where I am in this business was not easy. And getting the big major fights, you know, that's every referee's dream is to do the major fights. And you never know when we'll get the phone call to work our next show. I love the sport of boxing and I'm just thankful to be in the sport and be in the position that I am. And I just leave it at that.